Do you want me to announce that? Yes. <laughs> everyone who's on the phone, if you could, maybe I should turn on my microphone. Uh, everyone who's on the phone, if you could mute your lines, that'd be fantastic until we get to questions. Ready? Bob, you ready? Okay. Good morning, everyone. We've had a good legislative session. We're nearing the end. Uh, we've taken and made decisions that will invest into long-term infrastructure projects, put money into savings and reserves, and made good decisions for our future. We are investing a combined $100 million to finish connecting the state to high-speed broadband access, and we're also putting $50 million into an endowment for the South Dakota Freedom Scholarship. That will help kids who have financial needs go get a higher education in the future. We're also building the Dakota Events Complex, which will be in Huron, South Dakota, that will help us host national events for livestock and rodeo going forward, and we're putting money into savings, paying off bonds, and trust funds to strengthen the state budget for the future. We're improving health care for South Dakotans by making it more flexible and affordable. We're recognizing health care licenses for individuals that are moving to South Dakota from other states, and then we're providing transparency for health care costs as it relates to insurance companies. And on Tuesday, I signed the telehealth bill, which will allow South Dakotans to have greater flexibility in their access to health care. And I'm sure you know that yesterday, marked the one year anniversary since our first COVID cases in the state of South Dakota. It also sadly is the one year anniversary of our first reported COVID death in the state. We responded by adapting to those challenges and by finding new ways to take care of folks and to problem solve and get through that challenging situation. We also this legislative session have been defending uh, freedom and liberty of South Dakotans. We defended life by signing bills that protected babies that would be born alive. We also signed a piece of legislation that would protect babies in the womb that would be uh, potentially aborted based on the Down syndrome diagnosis. We defended liberty by simplifying youth hunting. We empowered parental choice in education, and I did sign that bill yesterday. We did not expand government control over our citizens like we've seen in some other states as well. We defended property rights. We passed asset forfeiture reform with regards to conservation officers. We also opened up East River land to owners to hunting on their own land. And we passed legislation that would codify the Department of Game, Fish, and Parks' policy as it pertains to open fields. It's been a busy session. It's been a good session. There are a few things to iron out yet, and I know the appropriators are still working on the budget, but we are in good shape to finish up our work on time and be prepared to go home and come back on veto day to deal with anything that might be left to, sit, to finish this session. With that, I will turn it over to any questions that you may have. Governor, sure. Uh, so House Bill 1217 affects all student athletes, not just trans athletes. Uh, do you think it's fair to potentially jeopardize all collegiate athletic activity in the state? And is this not expanding government control? Well, House Bill 1217 is about women's sports and protecting women's sports. It will ensure that girls participate in girls' sports and going forward that that fairness is there that was promised uh, by Title IX and what it means to enforcing that in regards to our Constitution as well. So, Governor, I'm Chris Mondrasi. Sure. Just to follow up on that question, uh, what should happen you are a transgender child, a particular transgender girl, and you want to play sports. Well, this bill isn't about transgender. It's about girls' fairness in girls' sports. So girls will be able to play in girls' sports. If a girl chooses to want to play in a boys' sport, that is still going to be allowed. Uh, there isn't a definition here in regards to transgender individuals at all. It is about the fairness of Title IX and how it impacts girls' sports. Yes. Um, Stephen Gross, maybe. Uh, so last time, uh, South, Dakota, South 
Republican Lieutenant Governor, um, received a bill that affected transgender people. Uh, governor Dugard sat down with transgender people um, and spoke with them about the bill. Uh, do you plan to do anything similar to that? You know, we are still examining the bill, getting getting ready to make uh, decisions on it, and that's like we do with every other bill, and we'll continue to move forward. Uh, so do you have any... I don't have any plans immediately. I don't think there's been any requests to meet with those individuals, but um, we certainly are open to listening to everybody. And there's a, a demonstration plan that you're, uh, you're residents today. Will you engage with people who are there in any way? I'm not planning to. Jonathan? Um, House Bill 1100 obviously mm -hmm. died yesterday. Um, plans going forward on, as of now, I initiated measure Effect. What are your plans? Yeah, I don't have any plans really to pursue further legislation. We're kind of at the end of our time here. I would say I do have concerns about initiated measure 26. I hope everybody understands that under that initiated measure that people can grow as many plants as they want to at home. They just need a prescription from a doctor and they could grow 500, 1,000 plants if they wanted to. The kids of all ages will have access to marijuana and will have the ability to utilize those homegrown products as well. So that's my concern. I was really hoping we could stand this um, program up, getting stakeholder feedback and information. Um, that would have given us a little time to do it correctly, but um, I'm disappointed that the, we didn't come to a resolution on that. So as of the end of this session, it looks as though initiated measure will stay as it was on the ballot. Would you consider calling a special session? I haven't considered it yet. Governor Mill. Yes. So uh, you're saying that the women's sports bill is not about transgender people, it's about girls' sports, but the bill would restrict trans women from being able to participate on a team that aligns with their uh, gender identity. So are you implying that trans people don't exist? No, not at all. Um, yes. Two questions. Um, so um, when you talked about what's called 17, it's, it's more generally like section one, but further on down in the bill, um, there are some other things that I have questions about. Do you think it's appropriate that kids should have to go to the courts to essentially prove their genitalia just to get reinstated on a sports team? <clears throat> well, in South Dakota, in regards to this legislation, it reflects birth certificate. It, it has schools collect a written waiver that, that basically is uh, somebody writes down like what their reproductive biology is, and then the courts would look at that, or, or schools would keep that on file. Is that the appropriate role of government? Well, I won't weigh in on what each individual school district may decide and what the court system process would be. But that's what the bill said, and you said you were excited, excited to sign the bill. Do you think that is the appropriate role of government? I think in regards to this piece of legislation, we're evaluating that and we'll move forward based on that evaluation that I put every bill through. Governor Noam Austin is on. Right now. First off, uh, good morning. Good morning. Uh, HB 1228, dealing with uh, industrial hemp, mm -hmm. passed uh, both the House and the Senate with a veto proof majority. I was wondering if you intend to veto that law or sign it into law. That decision hasn't been made yet. Yes, uh, Governor Noam, there was uh, this, I guess there was a bill that passed out of both houses regarding um, an office of liaison for missing and murdered indigenous <coughs> persons at the Attorney General's office. Do you plan on signing that bill? We are looking at that bill too. We've had a lot of bills that have gone through the process that we're continuing to evaluate. Oh, is there anybody on the phone that has a question or comment? Go ahead, Lee. And then as we're looking forward, it looks like the state of South Dakota is about to get like a billion more dollars from the feds. Are, have, have there been any discussions about what to do with that money? And, and what, what, do you, what do you see as the role of that new $1 billion? We've been getting some feedback on what legislation might look like and how it impacts the state of South Dakota that would be coming uh, through Congress. That's not finalized yet, and of course the state has to comply with Treasury guidance, so we're not sure how that will impact the state yet, and we've asked the legislature uh, to wait on making any decisions on what they think that could be utilized for. 
Um, that bill is pretty broad and pretty complicated, and the impact on our state could be different based on whatever guidance Treasury does give us. The governor, no. Yes. Obviously, as we were saying earlier, I am 26, except it's in the law of the land. What is your approach, assuming that's going to happen before implementation here in the next two months? Well, we're going to work as hard as we can to stand up a program that's responsible, that does what the voters wanted, and they wanted medical marijuana and a program to be available for folks that that needed uh, that kind of a program to participate in. The challenge is how it was written and some of the flaws in how it was written. So I am concerned about the homegrown provisions um, and how we move forward on that, and then also what happens to kids of all ages and their access to it, especially in the homegrown space. Yes. Caroline, South Dakota Broadcasters, first, thank you for being available to us each week during legislature. As we pivot into the rest of the year, your work, the work of the legislature doesn't change. So what's ahead? What can we expect in the weeks and months to come as we transition out of the legislative season and into routine business in South Dakota, whatever that yeah. is? Well, we're still dealing with COVID-19 and getting uh, everybody back online and hopefully back to normal as soon as possible. Uh, and we also are going to continue to follow through on these projects that we passed bills for. Uh, we'll be spending a lot of time with the Department of Public Safety, Health, and Revenue on standing up the medical marijuana program and trying to do it uh, the best we can to protect health, but also make that available like the voters wanted. Um, so a lot of implementation on programs going forward, and then we're thankful for a little bit of moisture that we got. I was concerned that we were going to have a year full of drought, and I'm hopeful that we'll go into a good growing season and our farmers and ranchers will have a year where they can have a good a crop and the ability to help our state continue to thrive economically. You know, and we're, we're very busy moving businesses to our state. I think one of the things we were just discussing uh, was workforce. Training workforce uh, is incredibly important going forward because we've got a lot of companies that are moving here and we need people trained with the skills that they need to fill those jobs. Governor? Yes. Um, part of the uh, stimulus um, coming from Washington, uh, part of the stipulations for that was that uh, governors could not use those funds to uh, cut taxes. Mm -hmm. um, would you consider um, not uh, receiving, not using those funds at all or, or, or not receiving those funds based on that stipulation? Yeah, we have to evaluate that. It was, it was interesting to see that provision included, um, but obviously South Dakota has a low tax base anyways and a very friendly tax environment but we'll look at how they give us the guidance on what that bill means and how those dollars can be utilized. Governor, um, yes. In terms of medical marijuana, how will it be taxed? I don't know yet, Bob. I mean, that's an honest truth. I, I don't know, and that's why we wanted time. We wanted time to look at what was happening in other states. There's no other state that has stood up a medical marijuana program this fast before, except Oklahoma, and it's a mess. And I wanted to avoid that here in South Dakota. I wanted to have more time to do it responsibly, to make sure we were being fair, and to make sure the people who could utilize it for medical reasons could, but that we didn't jeopardize anybody else's health or our children to the risks that it, that it poses for them. So that's the challenge that I have in front of me now, is how do we take IM26 and do it in a responsible manner and be fair? And that's why I wanted stakeholders to have time to weigh in. In terms of, uh, I mean, it'll be an agricultural product uh, in one way, um, but in another way, dispensaries are going to sell it, uh, and, but they're going to be selling it as medicine. Correct. Um, and a doctor can write a prescription to somebody who wants it for a treatment such as anxiety or anorexia or bulimia, and they'll be able to grow a thousand plants at home. And so that's the challenge is the amount of, you know, conditions that it can be prescribed for. Um, once a doctor writes that prescription, an unlimited amount of plants can be grown at home. And how do we contain that and, and not make sure that it's being utilized for different purposes? So, so going forward, then, how do you, do you continue to go back to the legislature and ask every year for another appropriation to get paid for the enforcement and the regulation? We're continuing to look at that. It will cost the state money to stand up this program. There was some dollars appropriated for it this session to get started on that path, and we'll have to evaluate how much it will continue to cost taxpayers.
Governor Nome, this is Jody at DRG Media Group and Pier. Yes, go ahead, Jody. Um, the proposed merger of the Ag and Environment and Natural Resources Department is moving forward. So, uh, what are next steps for those two agencies and getting this uh, this merger completed? I think just streamlining programs and and uh, continuing operating like they do, but having more communication between the agencies because they'll be in the same building uh, and working together each and every day. So, uh, you know, obviously we have Secretary uh, Hunter Roberts that will be heading that up. We also have the Lieutenant Governor Larry Roden, who is the ambassador for agriculture in the state, and they'll be heavily involved in making sure that that merger not only continues to protect our water quality and our environment, but also creates a one-stop shop for ag producers in the state. Jonathan? Oh, sure. Anybody else have a question? I think they're good. Um, I'm assuming you've met Andrew Cuomo. And I Adams. have, a couple of times. Any, any thoughts on what's going on with your colleague there in New York? No, I just, uh, it's interesting to watch what he did with nursing homes. I think it's a tragedy what happened there and the policies he followed. And I do think the investigation is warranted. Governor, one more question. About sure. Have you heard from any businesses or the NCAA at all or the Summit League about pulling out any kind of tournaments or um, activities? I've heard from individuals, not businesses and not in particular from the NCAA. Austin? Uh, yes, ma'am. You know, you talked about this a little bit in the beginning, but obviously with this session, we just had an unprecedented number of dollars available, both from revenue and from, of course, federal stimulus. Just, you touched on some of the highlights, but if I could just get you to talk a little bit more about maybe how you thought it went overall trying to spend those dollars throughout the session, ma'am. Well, the budget's not done, so I'll be able to talk better when it's completed. I hate to put us in a position where something changes today and then I misspoke, but you know, I was proud of the legislature that they're willing to put more money into trust funds and that they recognize the need to put money into reserves as well, not really knowing what the economy will look like in the next two or three years going forward. To have that kind of uh, reserve in place will be helpful stabilizing our state government and the services that we provide. They also invested heavily in infrastructure. Getting high-speed broadband access to the entire state was a priority of mine. I was glad to see that funded. They're investing in some railroad, which will be very helpful for us in moving uh, commodities across the state of South Dakota. And also the DEX building, uh, radio towers, public safety, all of those are long-term benefits that I think are wise investments considering what was going forward. And then paying down bonds for our technical schools was something that was important as well. And we invested in our, our kids. Uh, getting that Freedom Scholarship set up was a big deal, and that will be there permanently for kids that don't have the financial means to go to get a higher education. And then also investing in some special projects and programs at our four-year universities is incredibly important as well. So glad to see some of those moving forward in the final days. Yeah. Um, real quick, getting back to the IM26 again, I apologize, but um, there was a compromise that was proposed in the conference committee mm -hmm. that essentially would have put most of IM26 into effect July 1st anyways. I think Speaker Gosh brought it. I'd seen memos that your office was circulating that compromise. Mm -hmm. So I guess what's, what's different about we had that? We had helped work on that compromise, and that was something that would have put us in a better spot today if they had adopted it. Um, it took out the homegrown provisions. It gave us a little bit uh, – it, it set it up on time, like the voters had voted on, on the fall ballot. But it also gave the Department of Health the ability to write the rules with without the stakeholder and legislative input, which would speed it up and allow us to do that quicker. Um, that was not adopted, and so therefore we're back to IM 26 the way it was on the ballot. Is your main concern is the homegrown provision? Then? It is, and then just the lack of control around our kids having access to it. That homegrown provision has been extremely problematic from the beginning. And, uh, you know, I certainly understand the desire of the public wanting to have a medical marijuana program, just I want to do it responsibly. Just to follow up on that, do you have any plans to I don't. What was interesting to me was at the beginning of session, uh, many legislators were coming to us asking for us for a delay. They wanted to have more input. They recognized that there needed to be some challenges. So we were not the only ones who wanted to have some provisions, and there was a lot of debate throughout session on what changes 
would be acceptable and which ones wouldn't be. Uh, a lot of people invested a lot of time into it. Um, we're at the end of session. There are no changes as of today. Uh, that doesn't mean that someone might not come back and have an idea to deal with later on. Thanks, everybody. Appreciate it. Thanks, guys.